mighty, oh God. Are you ready to worship him? You are good, you are kind, you are more than these. Lost for words, I'm trying to describe. Elohim, Elion, Alice, Elohim. Your greatness is all that I see. So there is nothing you cannot do. There's no mountain you cannot move. If you have said it, yes, you will do it. You've got a track record of keeping Everybody lift up your voice and let's sing it. Holy Ghost, lift up your voice and pray in the Spirit and let us give Him thanks. He brought us up to the mountain that we may have a drink of His presence, a drink of His Spirit. If you can pray in the Spirit, then lift up your voice and let's worship Him. Whoa, worship Him. Go ahead and worship Him. Let the instruments worship. All of the instruments worship Him. If that is what we did in the next three minutes, pray in the spirit and let all your understanding be quickened within your heart as you worship. That's the way to release. That's the way to release yourself into the things you have received. You know, we receive from the Lord, then we release ourselves into what we have received. You can't receive and become. No. When you hear what the Lord is saying, then you release yourself into it. Pray the Holy Ghost as you release yourself into what you have received. Into the things you have heard. Pray the Spirit. Everyone, in the next two minutes, go ahead. You are mighty, oh. what I want you to do within this few minutes pray in the spirit just go ahead we're going to be settled in a moment release yourselves into what you have received release yourself into what you receive you can't receive from the Lord and then become what you receive no it is when you hear him that you release yourself into what you have received. Then you become. How do we release ourselves? Praying by building up our most holy faith. Praying in the Holy Ghost. With an understanding, quickening in our spirit. Then our understanding and then praying in the spirit comes to a point together where the word cannot become flesh. The Bible said that the word became flesh and dwelt among us. And we have beheld his glory. As the glory of the, of the begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. That's how it works. Pray in the Spirit as you release yourself into what you have heard. 
as you release yourself into what you have received. And that's the only way to become. There is a wine that he can give you. It is him alone that can give that wine. He said to the woman, I will give you this water. And if I give you this water, you will not test again. For out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. That is the wine that he alone can give. Yes, pray in the spirit, everyone. Go ahead and pray. Go ahead. Intensify. Intensify your cry. Intensify your expression. Intensify the release of your desire. Intensify the outcry of your deep longings. It is not everyone that comes to the presence of God that comes with a longing. It is not everyone that comes with a deep longing. But you will know. You will know those who came with deep longings. How they cry out from the depths that is within them. Yearning for him. Somebody pray in the spirit. Moses Jehovah come get so Woko sisi nene do Obara kito kure no do ya Obo no ya come get so Oka kake vini be Malite no do do Alpha no vega Somebody talk to him Obo no ya come get so Moen Jehovah kam geso Woko si si ne nye du Obara ki tso kubre no no ya Obo no ya kam geso Oka keke bini be Mali te na kogo Alfa no mega Sing it out. 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 Sing it out.
Lift up your hands if you can. Lift up your hands if you can. From the pages of my heart, let my worship begin and never end. Lift up your hands. Let us worship him. So from the pages of my heart, oh, let my worship begin and never end. Oh, yes, to the God of all flesh. Cause he's my God. He's my God. And his name is Yahweh. His name is Yahweh. I give it up to the Father. He's my God. Oh, my God. He's 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 my That you are in his presence now. Everyone lift up a voice, pray in the Holy Ghost. That is how we are releasing ourselves to the things we have received. We have received a lot in this meeting. Now release yourself into it. It cannot impact you until you are released for it to enter. Once has the Lord spoken, twice have I heard him. His word has found a place in my heart. His word has found a place in my spirit. And this is why he shall remain Yahweh in me and upon me. Someone pray in the spirit. If indeed that in the course of this meeting that the Lord was driving you. If the messages you were hearing was driving your spirit. They were like drivers upon your soul into realities then pray in the holy ghost for many the lord was driving you to absolute surrender god was driving you through the entrance of his world to separation then pray in the holy ghost if you are here and you've got the deep hunger for god if you are here and there is a desire in your heart burning a desire to rise to higher heights in the lord then pray in the spirit if you are here and you are having a dwindling, decaying or dwindling spirituality, the altar is the altar is in a battle and you are struggling to keep up to the things you know and you have received from the Lord, then pray in the Holy Ghost release yourselves to the reality of the oracles that is upon us in this place release yourself in prayer someone here, you are determined, you are determined in your heart to confirm the prophecy that is upon your life you are determined to confirm that prophecy that is upon your life in the midst of the battles and, con and contradictions i'm speaking to someone you are determined to confirm the prophecy upon your life in the midst of the battles and contradictions that is bedeviling everything you do right now pray in the spirit for there is a release for that person there is a release for that woman god rest upon that life rest upon that soul by your spirit somebody here ossas ossas be at a lot go around the holy spirit is ministering to my heart that there is someone you are you've been determined to confirm the prophetic word of god over your life in the midst of the contradictions in the midst of the confusions in the midst of the things that are happening that are refusing to confirm the lord's word and you stood in the place of prayer determined to confirm it right now the hand of the lord is heavy upon you heavy upon you the spirit is coming with direction the spirit is coming with instruction the spirit is coming with revelation Up, yes upon that one father to child spirit to spirit i'm lighted by your word go ahead and pray 
also stay with them and with the breath of life that's how i come alive that's how i change my world the hand of the lord is heavy yes father to child you see the impartation is the holy ghost that will do it it's not me i am not the one i'm not the one for the impartation no the holy ghost while we yet speak and with the breath of life that's how i come alive that's how i change the world just breathe your name upon me breathe just breathe your name just breathe your name upon me breathe your name will hear is your name breathe Lord just breathe your name upon me just bring your name on me. Bring your name upon me. Bring. Just bring your name. Just bring your name upon me. Oh, oh, your name, your name. Your name, your name is your name. Bring, Lord. Just bring your name. Just bring your name upon me. Just bring your name. Sing it one more time. We cry, just bring your name. Just bring your name upon me. Lord, just bring your name. Just bring your name upon me. Your name, your name. Your name, your name is your name. Just bring your name. Just bring your name upon me. Talk to him. Talk to him. If you can sit down for a while, do. Because tonight, we are going to be drunk. I, I'm telling you. I know what I'm saying. Because I need you to hear the few things I want to say. Because I'm sure that if the reality of this meeting will be perfected, then someone must leave this meeting drunk, drunk, and filled with wine. That's the only way out. If you can sit down for a moment, do, but we are still praying. When the last day church was born, I was careful to follow the, the kinds of languages they, they used and the things they spoke. Bible is filled with prophetic languages and prophetic promises. But how you will know the intent and the mind of God is when you follow the men of the spirit and see how they were selective about the kind of prophecies they elicited. The apostles, if you want to understand the new wine, the mystery of the new wine and where we belong and what it is meant to do in us, then go through the acts of the apostles. Yesterday I was talking about the wine press and I, was not, I couldn't exhaust the mystery of the wine press. However, I want to say a few things. When the apostles were, were speaking, haven't been drunk with the new wine. The kinds of things they began to say suggested to me what is the will of the Father concerning the mystery that we must enter if we are to have the encounter of the new wine. They spoke in the book of Acts of Apostles in chapter 15. If you go down to verse 14, the Bible said, Simon who was to be called Peter, he began to speak. So the whole book of Acts of the Apostles, if you can study them, take time and mark out the prophetic words they quoted. That is, all of the prophetic work that the book of Acts took from Old Testament are the prophecies that are relevant for the formation, nurturing, and the release of the last day church. 
So, if you note that prophecy, you can now leave the book of Acts of Apostles, go to that prophetic book and go and sit upon it. In sitting upon that prophetic book itself, studying the prophet itself, studying the prophetic mysteries in the prophetic book itself, you will now capture the, you will now capture the, the intoxication that took the, the brethren, the people of the Acts, to say those things. Because men don't alter by knowledge of the flesh. They alter by knowledge of the spirit. Are you understanding what I'm saying? And so these things were utterances made by the knowledge of the spirit. So the spirit being consistent in times and seasons from generation to, to generation must say the things that will be relevant for my time. And if I am in the end time church, so whatever the Bible is saying in the days of the Acts of the Apostles is relevant unto me. And so in Acts chapter 15, from verse 14 down to 17, Simon was speaking. He said that what shall be fulfilled as they are entering it is that the Lord will be restoring the tabernacle of David. Did you, did you remember that? You can put the scripture on the screen, please. Acts chapter 15 from verse 14, he spoke and from verse 16, he started talking about the restoration of the tabernacle of David. And I said, okay, why? And that, that was where he stopped. And I said, why will he be selective about the restoration of the tabernacle of David? And the Bible said that that tabernacle of David was such tabernacle that became where God, heavenly, divine leadership and earthly leadership came together. The tabernacle of David was Zion. Am I correct? Yes, there was a time in this KDC, our theme was the reality of Zion. That was when God first opened us into that mystery. And so, the tabernacle of David is Zion. But I understood that David was the one who fulfilled that mystery. Can we have that scripture on the screen, please? It's more important now. Keep the scripture there and let's be meditating. And the Bible said that, that God will restore the tabernacle of David. And David became the one who fulfilled the government system of that tabernacle which is the government of Zion what is the government of Zion it is an absolute system where God governs the whole, the whole territory it is a system where God is the absolute governor it is, not the, it is not democracy where man is playing a role and sometimes God is not even involved no David was David was a man. So Simon had declared how God had first visited the Gentiles to take them out of the people by name. Verse 15. Quickly. Let's read scripture. Quickly. And to this agree the word that the prophet had written as of old. Yes, 16. That after this he will return again and rebuild the tabernacle of David which was falling down. And he will rebuild again the ruins thereof. And he will set it up. Now, the, what you should underline of all the importance of the prophecy that God will be bringing out from this man at this time of prophecy that concerns us is that he will be rebuilding the tabernacle of David. And when I went to study about the tabernacle of David, it was a system on the earth that will become like the system of our God and of his Christ. The Bible said in Revelation that in the last day, what will become the fulfillment is that the, 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 the kingdoms of this world shall become like the kingdoms of our God and of his Christ, where he shall reign. Now, David was the man that fulfilled that first on the earth. After David, no other governmental system has been able to do that in the governing systems of the world. It was David that had the ark brought back. He celebrated the arrival of the ark and set it up on that mountain and called it Zion and put a tent on it. This time around, the tent was not like the temple where you will come in and you cannot assess the ark. The ark was just the only piece of, of furniture in that tent. So coming into the tent, you are meeting the ark. That is to say, the moment you come into the tent, you are there meeting with God. And so David was not the king, but God ruled. That was why... David will always submit to the rule of God in his own time. Are you following what I'm saying now? He submitted to the rule of God in his own time because it was God that ruled Israel, not David. Many times he wants to move. He said, bring me the priest or bring me the effort or make a well, Lord, shall I go? He, his government was totally subservient, submitted to the government of God. And that was the first time that was fulfilled. But what did prophecy say? I now went back to the book of Amos. Amos in chapter 9. When you go to Amos chapter 9 from verse 11. Please, let's read scripture. Amos 9 from verse 11. 
when David did this and set it up at Zion, what prophecy said in Amos 9 was fulfilled. It became a fulfillment. And how does it concern us? In Amos chapter 9, from verse 11, the Bible said, And in that day, I will raise up again the tabernacle of David that was fallen. Now, be careful to see where the mystery of the new wine came in. And close up the breaches thereof, and I will raise up his ruins and build it up as in the days of old. Next verse. Let's keep. That they may possess the remnant of Edom and of all the heathens which are called by my name. Remnant of Edom and all the heathens which are called. So there are heathens that are called by the name of the Lord that are waiting to be recovered, that are waiting to be harvested. As we speak and seated here, you don't lift up your eyes and look at unbelievers or look at heathens and say, they are in darkness. Glory, glory to God, we have found light. God is saying that to the ends of the earth where there are people who are yet unreached, they are already called by the name of the Lord. So a generation that will go to harvest them must be born. Are you understand what I'm saying now? So God has already placed his name in the unreached places of the world. God has already placed his name in unreached corners of your family. God has already placed his name in the unreached places of your life. Where his presence has not yet accessed. He has placed his name there as a potential territory that he must, con he must conquer. A potential territory that he must take. And so this is what will happen. That the remnant of Edom and then all of the heathens that are covered the same host. When this happened, what, 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 what shall we see? Verse, verse 13. Behold, the days will now come, saith the Lord, that the plowman shall overtake the reaper, and the trader of grave, him that soweth seed. And at that time, what will happen from the mountains? And the mountains shall drop what? The mountains shall drop what? Sweet wine. And the hills shall melt. The mountains in this day shall drop sweet wine. In the day that the tabernacle of the Lord shall be restored, the tabernacle of David, in the day that the remnant of Edom shall be recovered. Why did he use the word remnant of Edom? Because one who came out of Edom in Isaiah 63 had already trampled part of Edom. He is the firstborn among many brothers. He was our first leader. Are you listening to me now? I won't take you to Isaiah because I want to be short. Jesus had come out of Edom. I said it yesterday. Who is he that proceeded out of Edom? With garments stained red from Bozrah. So he is the one that had trampled Edom and had conquered. So there is a remnant of Edom that he left for you and I to conquer. Are you following what I'm saying now? There is a remnant of Edom he had left for us to conquer. But before we could conquer it, the mystery of the new wine must be confirmed in our lives. That was why I started by saying that we must be returned to the wine press. I won't go back there this evening. We must, be, we must be brought to the wine press, the place of source, the place of making, the place of formation, where the crushing and the separation will bring the product that God intends. I'm coming back there because that will be the last thing that we'll be discussing this evening before we begin to pray. And so the Bible said that sweet wine will drop. David fulfilled this prophecy. And when I began to study about the government of David, then I knew that that man did not just live, did not just live a physical life. He lived in the power of an age that is yet to come. Because the Bible said that David set up his kingdom, his headquarters in a place called Zion. In those days, they don't, they don't name a place as we give names today. They name a place according to what it is. And so Zion was the name they gave to that territory because of what it is. What was it? It was a dry place. No water. When you hear Zion, it means past place. Zion means dry place. Indeed, where David established his kingdom, you hardly can find water. It's a desert. It's a dry place. Water was not found. This is the reason why vineyard became the most beautiful resources that men need to have. Because in Zion, men drink wine in place for water. Are you understand what I'm saying now? Wine is what they, they, they wine serves for water. You can hardly find what in the, among the Jews, it's a tradition that every Jewish man will have a little vineyard around his house. The reason is because the availability of natural water is scarce. The whole place is a desert. So they have to produce plants that can give them fluid 
And so, when they go, each time they are thirsty, there is no They go to the vineyard, collect some few grapes, go to the wine press and, and crush it, and then the, 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 the wine flows, and they take it as water, and so they drink. But you know that if you are really thirsty, if you are really thirsty, no alternative fluid can satisfy the thirst for water. Are you aware of that? So, the men of Zion, every time they are taking wine, every time, because if you are really thirsty and I give you Coke, you will finish drinking that Coke and you will still need water. Am I correct? And the thirst will still remain. And so, this man in, this man will always keep drinking. That is why you will see, when you read the Bible, you will know, they are always on wine. They are always on wine. It's not because they want to, it's because they are thirsty. I just realized that anybody that will be a citizen of Zion must be a drunkard. Yes. And wine symbolizes the Holy Ghost. So everything that David was playing out in the Old Testament was trying to point at the picture. It was a pattern for the spiritual church that will come in the end time. That it shall be a church that will be established in a dry place like this earth where nothing of this earth can satisfy you except the wine that the Father gives. And because that wine, when you take it, it will not quench your thirst, but you will want more. So the more you take him, the more you want to take him. Are you understand what I'm saying? It's a shadow of a reality that you must live in. And so if you are not living in this reality I'm teaching now, the mystery of the new wine, the, the power of the new wine has not yet dawned on you. How will you know anyone that is a citizen of Zion, he will always feel that thirst in his soul as that there pants for water. So my soul long get after you David was speaking from the context of the dryness of his house where he lives he knows are you understanding me now he understands dryness so everything that happened to him he converted it to Psalms as the deer pants for water my soul longs after you David David was not in any marathon race to, no he, he just knew that his environment is a dry place so he now imagined it, that dryness of his thirst and that thirst in him and then turned it to the Lord and said this dryness in my heart my soul longs after you. he wasn't singing for himself he was describing a pattern for the last day church he was are, are you hearing me now he was a picture of the church that was to come that if you really, if really you are of God, if really you are of God in this end time, and your soul is not in absolute test for the Lord, then something is obviously wrong with you. If you really are of God, and the desire, the thirst and desire appetite for things are stronger than your appetite for knowing the Lord, then honestly something is wrong in your spirit you are not yet in zion any day you arrive in zion the environment will make you a drunkard the environment will make you seek for wine and that wine is symbolic of the holy spirit that is why the bible said rather than being filled with wine be filled with what the holy ghost so what scripture is recommending is that if the new wine will become a reality in our hearts then we must be drunk with the holy ghost according to the pattern of the lifestyle of those who dwell in zion because every time they are always drinking the the one they drank today cannot quench the next test so it's only a momentary time they go back to the vineyard and collect another grape and put take it to the wine press cross and drink so every time they are collecting grapes and that is why vineyards in israel are crops that grow around the clock it grows around the year go and go and go and check it grows they keep it around the year because it provides what in those ancient times it's not now that they have done some modernization and civilization and now they have waterways and channels that provide in those ancient times before you could find a well that was why when they found well they fought over it they fought over well water is precious because the whole place is a dry desert when they found well they fought for it when God brought them to the place of refuge, you know, that was why in the, in the wilderness, they desired water. And they told Moses, we are about to die here because of the, 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 the breaking desire for water. They shouted at Moses. That's how dry the environment is. We are so blessed. 
that the geography we have here is, is totally is no 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 it's not god is just faithful so when you understand the reality of the environment they live in and how god could love a people and with his love he placed them in that kind of environment then he has a message everything about what god, the dealings of god with the people was a shadow of an understanding that the last day church should have and the understanding is that if you are of zion your heart will never be satisfied with natural supply are you hearing what i'm saying i want more of you sing that song i want more of you jesus the more i know you oh he's the more i want to know Jesus. And so if this is the reality, what are we going to be praying for tonight? We're going to be praying that God, give me wine. I need wine. I need that drink that is drink indeed. Give me wine. Bring me to the source. Bring me to the wine press where I can always assess wine. Bring me to the place where I can find wine. wine which was symbolic of the blood of Christ when he ascended he told them that this covenant will continue because I'm going to send you the Holy Spirit so the Bible now began to make it clear that for the New Testament church after the ascension the mystery of wine became the Holy Spirit the ministry of the Holy Spirit in the life of a believer that's the mystery of wine and how do you know that the Holy Spirit is in the life of a believer I was sharing in one of the conferences and the Lord said to me I was, I was asking a question. The Lord took me into a dealing one morning when I was having my quiet time. And I said to him, Lord, I, I just want to be filled. And, and the flesh was telling me, ah, don't you know you're a man so full of the Holy Spirit? And I said, this must be the voice of the flesh. Because men of Zion never got enough of wine. Can you hear me? They never got enough of wine. So anything that makes you feel you've gotten enough of God, then you're already out of Zion. Now you're already out of Zion. You're not there. And so in that morning, I was asking the Lord, I want, I, I, want, I want more wine now. And I was conversing, asking that question. He said, I said to him, how can I, how can I know that I have enough of wine in my spirit so that I can be satisfied? The Lord said to me, go to the drunkards and study the drunkards. There, I will teach you a lesson. I shared it somewhere. I said to him, what do you mean? He said, go and look for the drunkard. Study the drunkards. I said, God, okay, even if I can't go, let me start thinking in my imagination. Then I went to the drunkard, maybe in my mind. And when I met the drunkard, I found out that a drunkard will always drink. Can you hear what I'm saying? A drunkard will always drink. I mean, I mean, you are waking up 6.30 a.m. Others are thinking of what to do to take care of the family. The drunkard had, had reached one joint and is asking one madam, do you have such a, the such of that one? Because he cannot wake up and his body is not looking for drink. The Holy, the Holy Ghost told me, if you are full of my spirit, you, on waking up, your body is looking for me. That's how I know you're a drunkard. That's, you, must, you must become addicted to that thing you want to think. If it doesn't happen, you are not yet in Zion. Tonight, God will raise addicts. Addicts. People whose your body will look for wine. Early morning, you are, you are already on. They looked at them and said, it is just about the third hour. Why are you full of wine? Because they know that the, the Holy Spirit came upon them when drunkards drink. I mean, that was when the Holy Ghost came. When it is very important to know that if by this time of the day you are drunk, then you are a drunkard. So the Holy Spirit chose to come at a time that they will be identified as drunkard because he himself is wine. And they that must drink him must be drunkards. Are you understand what I'm saying now? He took me to that lesson. So I began to understand. Do you know one, one unique lesson about drunkards? That was the second thing he taught me. Anybody that is a typical drunkard, all he, the kind of friends he keeps, all his friends are fellow drunkards. A drunkard never keeps a useful, a, I mean, a, a drunkard will never keep a normal friend. And the Holy Spirit told me, boy, if you're a drunkard, all your friends must be equal drunkards. So who are those around you? Are they drunkards like you? Do you have friends who wants to, who are drunkards? When you meet them, they say, guy, have you drank this morning? And they are telling you what the Lord is saying last night. 
and you can't me leave them. You can't leave them without tonguing. Sometimes some of them wake me up by midnight with a call, and I say, "Any problem, guy? I just finished talking with God now." And in the midst, this guy is a drunkard. He's a drunkard. If you don't keep something, you, you you cannot know the Holy Ghost. If the people, if a typical drunkard keeps drunkards as friends, and he said to me, "If you are really full of wine." The evidence that you carry this new wine. He said, whenever, if you go to the house of a typical drunkard and enter his room, whether he's drunk or not, what's the fragrance? Oh, what's the aroma you perceive there? Alcohol everywhere. He said, if you are not full of me until every atmosphere around you, every atmosphere around you is, is the spirit, then you are not drunk enough yet. The, the, the drunkard, wait, if you pick his, his clothes, you will know that this shirt belongs to a drunkard. Because, because alcohol is coming out from the sweat pores. That's how the Holy Ghost will fill somebody here. Every With him. When I was studying, I came to realize. I'm teaching this evening. I hope you are, you are ready to pray. You must ask the Lord, bring me to the level where if I, when he passes, his, his, his smell alone will tell you this one is a drunkard. How many times have you crossed that compound and witches didn't know that anybody passed? Today, you will get drunk. If you arrive the territory, they will know somebody have come because the fragrance you carry is spirit all over the place. Are you hearing what I'm saying this evening? That's what it means to be full of new wine. That's what it means to be full of wine. Where you come in, the atmosphere will change because you entered. Why? The thing is coming out of his body. The Holy Spirit tell, told me that when the man gets drunk, even the way he walks, he walks in this world because alcohol takes over his walk. He said, I must take over the way you walk. If I, I will take over your, it is where the alcohol carries you that you go. The man lies down in a gutter and he's sleeping in a gutter and he's telling his wife that you didn't put this bed sheet well, best friend well. I mean, what the hell is that? He's not, the wife is not there. But he is in that situation. Alcohol made him comfortable in a place that man cannot be comfortable. And I said, what does it? the Holy Spirit tell me? If I am in you, I will take you to territories that men can't enter. And you will enter there and be comfortable and still break through and come out. And it is no longer a curse, but a blessing. Somebody here, you have to be drunk in the name of Jesus. Now we cannot be church. We cannot be playing church that is just activity and, and all in the periphery and the superficial. And the enemy will be raging havoc in the headquarters. A raging havoc in your home. Raging havoc in the things that concerns your life. And, and, and he comes to you and fund, I mean, handles you anyhow and pocket you. No! No. He takes over your spirit. He began to speak to me concerning the typical drunkard. What their life means. He said their speech, their speech, their language, their hearing, their sight, the, the, the alcohol, it takes over everything. And the Holy Spirit said, that's how I want to take over you. I take over your utterances. I take over your sight, what, how you see. Because you will not see things the way men see. You can't see from the perspective of this world. Everybody is shouting, there's a casting down. Me, I'm, I won't see casting down. My eyes is drunk. I'm seeing different. Can you hear me now? I'm seeing differently. The wine of God's spirit is upon the, is upon the eyes. That's why you fix your gaze. And darkness will understand that this one is coming in the power of the most high. And, and they cannot confront you. He said that when this tabernacle shall be restored, that the evidence is that the mountain will drip with wine. So anybody that dwells in Zion, they are constantly taking wine. Rise to your feet. Rise to your feet. The mountains will drip sweet wine. The word sweet there means you will desire it. The word sweet there means you will go after it. The word sweet there means you will pursue it always. Your heart will become so tied to it that there is no alternative except you get it. And so I realized that this evening, if men can pray, and say, Father, bring me to that experience, a desire where my spirit is full of wine. I have found out that the man who is a drunkard, 
the man who is a drunkard, it is on him. The, the typical drunkard, do you know? That every time he is intoxicated, I've met one. Every time he is intoxicated, as, as a matter of fact, he is always intoxicated. He wakes up in the morning at a point when the wine had gotten had gotten greater part of him. The wine changes even his countenance, his face, his expression, even his skin, how he looks. When you see a typical alcoholic, it, it, it shows on his skin. The organs change. Everything. It takes over everything about him. And the Lord said to me, that's, that's what it means to be full of the Holy Spirit. I asked the question, how will I know that I am full of the Holy Spirit? He said, go to the drunkards and learn from there. Go to the drunkards and I will show you. And it was getting to the drunkard I began to learn. Oh, this is what it means. The atmosphere around you. Everything that comes under it must know that God is with this man. Everything, everything that comes under that atmosphere must in the long run come to a conclusion. Dagon came to a conclusion. Am I correct? After all the controversy and argument and contest, Dagon came to a conclusion that this one, I can't stand before him. He came to that conclusion. The whole nation came to a conclusion. This, this piece of furniture here cannot remain in our land. We have to take it out. Because the presence and heavy hand of God it brought upon the nation was too much to handle. That's who we are. I'm speaking to someone here. For every, for every battle, every weight that has become a burden around you, such that the enemy seems to torment you and torture you and threaten you every now and then, harassing your very soul because are you a child of God? Be drunk and f be filled with the Holy Spirit. And let him radiate out of you. Out of you. Lift up your hands. And let's talk to him. If there is any prayer to pray tonight, Lord, make me a drunkard. If there is any prayer to pray tonight, Lord, as I rise from this conference, the New Wine Conference, the Bible said that they will behold new horizons. That those new horizons is the, is the conquering of the remnant of Edom. The remnant of Edom. The remnant of the heathens. Those are the new horizons. God will be sending men to new horizons. New assignments. There are people here. The things that God has placed in your hands have suffered stagnation for a, for a, for, for, for a, number, of, for a, for a number of years now. And you are trusting God for a move. We are trusting God for an advancement. This is the time to advance into a new horizon. But it will come by a drink. A drink of wine. That is wine indeed. A drink of wine. That is real before God's presence. Lift up your voice if you can pray in the Holy Ghost. I really don't, I really don't need to tell you what to pray. But as you pray in the Spirit. Let your heart make a demand. Lord make me a drunkard. I want to have a drink. Before I leave this conference. Give me a drink. Give me a drink. the mountain of the Lord's house shall be exalted above every mountain and men shall flow and run towards that mountain until now that prophecy is yet to be fulfilled until now David was the one who fulfilled the prophecy of absolute government of God KDC is 20 years 20 is a governmental number. It's a number of governance. Just as 12 is a number of governance. Lift up your voice and pray in the spirit. There is a governmental grace that shall rest upon people here. So that you can return to the territory that is allocated to you. To every man, there is an allocation. There is an allocation. There is somebody here. Your allocation is lying dormant. The Bible said, and thou shalt receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost is come upon you. And you will be my witnesses from Jerusalem to Judea to Samaria and then to the utmost part of the world. So there are territories that are allocated to men. There are territories that are given as a location. Lift up your hands as you pray in the Spirit. Pray in the Holy Ghost. 
you are rising from this conference full of the new wine to return to your allocation to the territory allocated to you i'm praying i'm speaking over the life of someone here your the, the, the territory allocated to you is suffering harass is still suffering harassment because you are yet to rise to the fullness of one that is full of wine lift up your hands and pray in the spirit feel me again feel me again feel me again lord jesus there is a fire there is a fire that is coming it is coming like fire it is coming like flames zipakata ritota sipate pari kapatori atate zinia para kapato sipete liatas mania mana pranote pe atates Yes, the hand of the Lord is upon men. The hand of the Lord is upon women. The hand of the Lord is upon sisters. It's upon daughters. Everyone that is an author, please move into them. Because there is a wave of God's spirit that is about to flow. It is the flow of the new wine. It's the flow of the new wine. Look at that woman there. Please go. Go stay with her. Zeniamana there is somebody here you have been you have been desiring deliverance from the dangerous challenges going on in the territory that god has given you currently you know that god has given you a certain a particular territory it is the territory of your family there is a territory of an assignment a territory of assignment has been given to you but presently that territory is under dangerous challenges of darkness i'm speaking to someone here Ah, whoever you are, I release the grace that is upon that is, that the apostolic grace rest upon you now. That is your allocation is waiting. Your allocation is waiting for your arrival. Yes, stay with that woman there. Stay with her. Pariatos kipatas. Yes. Look. Look at that woman on blue. Stay with us as go there. Stay with her. Yes, keep on praying. The heart. Nobody will lay hands on you, but the power of God will hit you. Many of them are erupting. You will erupt like a volcano. You will erupt. It's like an you like an eruption. The power of God will come upon you. Stay with her there. Take her back. Siliana Pakatoria Teta Pateriatoski Brahma. Zenimana Pranata. Give me a drink, oh God. Give me a drink, oh God. Somebody pray. My altar is calling you, oh God. My altar is calling you, oh God. Oh, speak from the heavens and the earth will hear. Oh, speak. My altar is calling you, oh God. My altar is calling you, The power of God is mighty here. The power of God is heavy. If you can have your hands lifted up, also stay with them. Look at that woman on the seat. Stay with her. There is a heavy hand of God upon her. Zipa katari pani atoski bata. There's someone here. The Lord is speaking clearly to me about you. What He gave you, 
what, what he gave you to do is clear. The business he placed in your hands is clear. You, you know about it, you understand it, but there is no capital. No capital to start. I'm not talking about capital. I'm not talking about physical capital. I'm talking about spiritual capital. Things that you know deep down in your spirit, the burden of your heart constantly reminds you that this is who I am. I'm talking to someone. The burden in your heart constantly reminds you of who you are. You know who you are, but you are unable to rise up to responsibility. Rise up to duty. Each time you try to rise up to, to rise up to duty of who you are, to rise up to stature of who you are, there is no strength within. Today I speak to that one. A spiritual capital. The capital you need. The resources you need. The requirements you need. Released upon you. There is an equipment now. Lord, rest upon that one as they pray in the Holy Ghost. Strength to arise. Strength to arise. Strength to capture the wisdom. Strength to capture the understanding. Strength to capture the things they know. What to do. Pray in the Spirit. For that's what the Lord is accomplishing here. Look at that woman there. Please stay with her there. And as you are helping them, just keep praying in the Holy Spirit. There's no need to bring anyone out. Just stay with them there. We are getting drunk. I have learned by experience that 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 one can be drunk in the Holy Ghost and remain in the intoxication of that wine. I'm not talking about spiritual intoxication, physically. Remain in the intoxication of that wine for four days, seven days, six days. Remain under that same intoxication for days. I have learned, I've seen it by experience. There are some of you, you are living here under this intoxication. It will run for days. And this is the engagement. This is the moment. You are getting engaged for it. In the day of my visitation, he came upon me in power. He came upon me in strength. I came under an intoxication. And I was in that same intoxication for a period of nine days. Nine days. Nobody was asking if I've eaten or drank. No, the body to pray remained. The body to pray in tongues remained. The body to stay in a place remained. I couldn't leave. I couldn't rise out of that room. I was just there. I wasn't taking my bath. I was just under the full dose of wine. Nine days. And I never knew that I was hungry. I never knew that I never drank anything. My spirit was oscillating under the frequency of heaven. Because I had made a request. I want to be a drunkard. I just want to be a drunkard. A man that any time you meet him, he's under the influence of wine. A man that whenever you meet him, he's under the full influence of wine. His body smells wine. His, his body radiates wine. You come into his territory, you can smell the spirit. You can smell the Holy Ghost upon him. Somebody pray. Pray. It doesn't change who you are. It doesn't make you a moody, silent person. That's not what it means to be spiritual. No. What it means to be spiritual is that you carry the spirit and you have rituals. So that every day you are on your ritual. Every day you are consistently on the same ritual. So that your intimacy and your consistency will describe your spiritual life. Somebody pray. These are the two things you can record about a drunkard. If we are to pick the term that would describe the drunkard, is intimacy and consistency. He is so close to the wine and he is drinking it every day. That is what describes the drunkard. And that is what describes the spiritual man. That to be spiritual, it's spirit and ritual. Spirit is a measure of intimacy. You are almost, you are with spirits. Then ritual is a measure of your consistency. So until you are drunk, you are not in Zion. Keep praying. Keep praying.
Radia vos a pataliatas. Si mana prana otoniatas. Give me this drink. Where are the women? Where are the women who will cry like the Samaritan woman? Give me this drink. Where are they that will cry like the Samaritan woman? I give me this drink. And suddenly she became a voice to the nation, gathering the entire nation to Christ effortlessly in one day. In one day, effortlessly. Because wine was in her. Wine was flowing out of her. Never again. Never again will you struggle mechanically for these things. It takes spirits to bring them to pass. I pray for someone here. Where is that woman crying like the Samaritan woman? Lord, give me a drink so that I, I can effortlessly take my territory. I can effortlessly take my territory. That, that Samaritan, it was allocated to that woman. It was allocated to that woman. How is it that a woman with seven husbands, a prostitute, was already carrying the name of the Lord? It is not surprise. Amos, Amos prophesied it. Amos said that it is the hidden upon whom the name of the Lord is declared. And that woman, Samaritan, is a typical picture of the hidden. And because she's an hidden, the name of the Lord was upon her. So he, she drank the wine and then we confirmed it. Amos was right. That there are hiddens. That the name of the Lord is upon them. Even hiddens. Lift up your hands and call upon him. Nobody is going to lay hands on you. No, tonight the impartation is not by laying on of hands. It is the cry of your heart that will pull down his spirit upon you. Yes, yes. It is the cry of your heart that will pull down his spirit upon you. How can they send marine spirits and marine spirits you tormenting me why marine spirits elemental spirits foul spirits coming and obviously coming to you in the dreamland tormenting and really having a greater part and conquering your life spiritually and it is obvious enough of that anybody here battling with such kingdoms and and and, and spirits today the wine come upon you. The wine rest upon you. The wine rest upon you. I hear people say, everything I plan to do, it scatters. Everything I plan to do, once I have this kind of experience, it all fails. Enough of that tonight. If you are in that category, lift up your hands. That everything you plan to do, suddenly you have one strange spiritual encounter and that's all. Everything ends like that. It must stop now. This is, this is the hour that the Lord will put an end to it infirmity affliction diseases it is not acceptable nobody is going to lay hands on you but the spirit of the lord will rest upon you Drummer, silence, keyboardist. Lift up your hands wherever you are. There are specific persons the Lord is speaking to me about, and He's particularly, He's particularly interested in them. Lift up your hands. Yesterday I was talking about the wine press. There is there is someone here. The things I was speaking about is particularly your experience. You are right now in the wine press, and it's as if it's as if you are taking blows. You are taking you are taking crushings that are too much, and you've been in that situation for years. And you are trusting God that this is the conclusion. And because the word of the Lord came to you in confirmation that you are in the wine press, I perceive strongly in my spirit that this meeting. Is, is, is marking the end of that season of your life. Yeah. Lift up your hands. It is not a place of punishment. It's a place of preparation. 
the wine press is where God turns pressure and pain into power. Yes, that's what goes on in the wine press. The hand of the Lord is upon that woman. You've been, you've been on the wine press for so long. Father, rest upon her now by your spirit. I hear in my spirit that the reason why the Lord took you through this heavy dealings and crushings is because having survived it that he's trying to equip you because you have survived it that you will survive things yes what you survive on the wine press determines the kind of things you survive in the battlefield there is somebody here haven't gone through the wine press i hear that you will survive the battles that are coming tomorrow because the wine press is a place where God prepares you with blows. With blows. When I was studying the wine press, I told you yesterday that the only way to, 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 the only way to take a lecture on the wine press is to follow Jesus from, from the onset of his passion unto Calvary. From the day he entered triumphantly into Jerusalem with the Orthodox, we take time to observe those days and do critical lessons. It has really made the greatest impact in my life as a minister. Yes, we take it Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. We do the studies of the event and follow G. We call it following Jesus to the cross. So after doing those studies, that was when I knew those days were his own wine press. That was when God took him through the crushing. Are you understanding me now? He took him through the crushing. And in the process of that crushing, Jesus was taken up to the cross. And it was on the cross that his crushings became completed. Became completed. And so, I discovered that what God is trying to fashion on the wine press is not your ability to conquer Satan. No. It is your ability to take the blows of Satan and not stagger. Is, are you hearing what I'm saying? That is what God is doing. What, what God is planting in the... What God will, is, 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 is producing when he crushes you in the wine press is that he is teaching you. He is crushing you so that when Satan crushes you, you will laugh at Satan. You will tell Satan, this is nothing compared to the crushings that my father has taken me through. You don't train a soldier by giving him food. You train him by crushing him. So when he comes to the battlefield and the enemies are crushing him, he will not feel it. Soldiers are trained sometimes by shooting them with, with, with bullets that will make them go down and bring like a lethal poison. They will shoot them with lethal poison and they will get weak. And the commander will be telling him, rise and run. So he wants to, he wants to create the, he wants to create a simulation, a simulation of the war. So in creating the simulation of the war, they shoot at the soldier in training, the young boy. And the lethal poison of the bullet goes into his body. And he is almost, and the commander is telling him, rise, pick up that heavy equipment and run. In the midst of that training, his body is being broken to take the blows of battle and I found out that what God is doing in the wine press is not to give you how to teach you how to conquer no is to teach you how to stand when the arrow of Satan hits you you stand strong as if Satan had done nothing there is somebody here I am praying even 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 in the system of boxing that is to every competition that's how it goes in battle that's how it goes how you will be able to conquer your enemy is not only by how much you can attack it is how much you can defend are you are you understanding me now? how much you can defend so sometimes when the enemy strikes how you will know great soldiers is that the enemy has shot him three to four bullets and he still carries that bullet and kill the enemy and kill others then you will know that this one is a trained general even with the bullet he can still fight that is what god wants to achieve on the wine press ability to make you rugged so that scripture we say though we are hard pressed on every side i cannot be crossed though i am perplexed i can never be in despair i may be persecuted but i will never feel abandoned i may be cast down but i cannot be destroyed that is what god is forming on the wine press because in the wine press 
those five days I saw Jesus not behaving anymore like Jesus I said I, are you still not Jesus they slapped you and you kept quiet he said to Pilate he said my kingdom is out of this world if I were to reveal to you who I am in your eyes both you and your palace and your territory will disappear here because I will only stand and my angels will wipe you out so the wine press is a place where you are trained to have power but don't use it you know you have all it takes you have all the power but you, are, you, 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 you just stay and you are taking you are taking the abuses you are taking the blows you are taking the attacks you are taking the backstabbings the gossipings you are taking them but suddenly in the end of it you are rising in glory because the bible said that had satan known that in the end of all this jesus will rise in glory he would not have crucified him so so the mystery of the wine press is another technology of god where the enemy thinks he is winning only to realize that all of his battle against you were a setup to bring you to your next level you might just say setup that is why i know that if this conference does not become an experience if, if this year's kdc does not become an experience then then take it up as a fast begin tomorrow you know you know the conference will dismiss tonight but the conference has not dismissed. we only adjourned it's an adjournment we are coming next next year so you can continue running your own conference i was in a conference in Abuja, and i told young people and i told both the people i told them that this reason what I came to this evening to do was the Lord said, get them filled with the Holy Spirit. I said to the people, prepare because in this kind of wine I see, men will be under the influence for days. I pray for you this evening. There are some of you here. Any little blow, you collapse. Any little attack, you are tired. You, you want to pray. Just that you fasted seven days. Six to six, seven days. On the seventh day, one strange, one strange harassing dream just came and messed everything up. And then you are discouraged, you are tired. Every you just go as if the whole thing in you is drained away. No, it's time to get tough. It is time to get tough. And I pray for you. The the experience of the wine press. If it is not an experience, you can start fasting from tomorrow. That's what I'm saying. Start fasting from tomorrow, stretch it out and tell the Lord that man of God said something God I want to see it I want to know it that was how I came to the Lord in prayer young I said Lord I read of you of you in scripture I read of this in scripture I want to see I want to see I just want to see Jesus lifted high I want to see him like a banner flying over the, the desire was strong until I was met by his spirit any which way you will meet him I say you will meet him in the name of Jesus lift up your hands say father I say father Give me wine. Now let's pray. Go ahead and pray. Go ahead and talk to him. Go ahead and talk to him. Nobody's going to lay hands on you. Oh no, no, no. Nobody's laying hands on you. If you are sick in this place, right now as we are praying, sicknesses is, are living, diseases getting out of you, infirmities getting out of your life, because the Lord and his presence is in this place. Talk to him. Talk to him. Mania no si prakatadia. A 
it is an investment in you that is greater than the crushing powers around you someone lift up your hands tonight God is making an investment in you that is greater than any crushing power of darkness because he has taken you through the wine press that is the place of that investment he has already made an investment in you that is far greater than any crushing power of darkness because he has crossed you already on the wine press in Jesus name let me speak to those categories that are, st that are still that are exiting still in the wine press or coming out fresh from the wine press there are things you need to understand so that the encounter, the impartation will be real. Because the understanding, the understanding is necessary for the impartation to run. Just be on your feet, we're praying. I realized something about the wine. That every wine has a winemaker. It is the winemaker that takes that wine through the crushing and through the separation and through the preparation. If it is in the modern time, the bottling process and the branding. Am I correct? And then, today, I go to my refrigerator and I pick up a wine. And sometimes, just by, by, in, by intuition, I just, I just want to read what is upon it. I just want to read. Does, does it happen to you? It does happen to me. I just pick up the wine. It's a wine I know. I just want to look at the things that are written again and read them. And then I will hear that this one is from Spain. Spain brewed and they will make some I just want to read those things and and then I will see the label and it just occurred to me and the Lord said to me that's that's what that that's how I branded you so as so that you will represent you will represent my interest and my name my name in the places you will go the reason why he wants to package you as wine is so that you can represent his interest and his name wherever you went so i realized that some of the crushings that god will take me through or take you through is not for yourself it's for someone else it's not necessarily for yourself it's not necessarily for you it's so that you will be able to minister to another you will be able to become the blessing to others now the wine was gotten from the place called spain but the wine had traveled all through to nigeria and he's somewhere in Enugu satisfying a man in his house representing the interest of the manufacturer from where he manufactured it and the Lord said to me when I say new wine I want to take you to the, through, through the wine press so that I can brand you and, and in the branding you will represent my interest and my name wherever, you may, wherever I may send you that is why the brand is left I was teaching some brethren in Abuja and I told them that now I understand the mystery of branding. Every wine is branded and Jesus branded his own wine. His first wine he branded was Jesus Christ. And what was the branding? The scars of the cross. I saw that Jesus was wounded, beaten, I mean beaten to stupor and killed and was buried. Died, medically speaking, it means his liver died. His heart died. Are you listening to me now? His blood vessels died. Blood stopped flowing. His, his lungs stopped expanding. But in the day of resurrection, God healed a dead lung and brought it back to life. Am I correct? A dead heart, he brought it back to life. Vessels that have congealed, he, he, he melted it and brought it back to life. God healed everything. Why did he leave this car and didn't heal it? But the scar, he did not take it away. That one is the brand. That's the brand. If the mark of the cross is not on you, you are not branded. Paul said, from now henceforth, let no man trouble me. Because I bear in my body. There are, there are those scars. It, it will not be deleted. That is the label that shows you. That is the label that confirms your identity. That's the label that shows you belong to him. That is what the wine brawler does. When he finishes, he brands his wine. 
when God brand, his new wine is Christ I taught you that yesterday that it is the blood of the new covenant which is said for me for you and for many and that is Christ and so Christ became the new wine he became the new wine when he was on the Passover table giving the wine he said take this is my body this is my blood so that new wine in the day of resurrection carried a brand a mark was on it and that mark that was on him was the mark of the cross and so when he met Thomas the only way Thomas could understand was that he called him and said put your hands in my hands and Thomas dipped his hands in the scar dipped his hands on the side and so I said to myself God you healed a dead lung but you didn't heal the scar the scar of the side you healed a dead heart and he came back to life but you didn't take away the scar in the hand and the Bible said in Zechariah and even in Revelation that on the last day when we shall meet him in the sky we will still see the scars in his hands so Jesus is in heaven on up till now with that scar in his hand it is still there God left it because that one is a label it's not an injury it's a brand it's a brand the Lord wanted to remain on him and then it dawned on me that until you are branded on the cross you don't have a life yet and the man who carried this brand he is called the new wine he is called the new wine and the label on the new wine was the scar of the cross I'm rounding up tonight by asking where are the scars of the cross on you yes where are the scars of the cross on you I see young young Christians growing and I'm asking where are the scars of the cross on you and it will be clear that there are many things habits characters that God is yet to deal with because they are yet to bring you to the cross the place of crucifixion that was why Paul said I have been crucified with Christ the life I live now, it is not I that is living it, but Christ living in me. So the scar is on him. Then I see those who have advanced in the faith. They are supposed to, some of them are supposed to be Christian fathers or Christian mothers. Advanced in the faith. When you look at their lives, it's as if you are yet not seeing the scars of the cross. Because if the scar of the cross is upon you, pride will not be there. If the scar of the cross is upon you, arrogance of title will never be there anymore. If the scar of the cross is upon you, the flesh will no longer glory in anything you do. If the scar of the cross is there, it is no longer you. It is no longer about yourself. It is about him. It is no longer about you. It is no longer about your name. It is no longer about who you are. It is no longer about your title. It is no longer about how many people follow me around. Are you hearing me, church? It is about Christ. And Christ crucified. That's the label. That's the brand. If there is any wine that, that, that the, the, the remnant of Edom is going to drink, if there is any wine that the heathens are going to drink, according to prophecy, of Amos chapter 9 verse 11 which is the prophecy for the last day church according to Acts of the Apostles chapter 15 because if it was spoken in Acts then it concerns us if it was spoken in Acts then it is for us so Acts told us that Amos 9 11 is for us and I am saying if there is any wine that the remnant of Edom will drink the heathens to the ends of the earth will drink that wine will be branded and the brand and the logo it's going to be the scars that the cross has put upon you. So, have you been to the cross? What scar can you clearly say that the cross has done? Somebody here tonight, before next year, you should be able to come back and say, ah, this was the habit I had. It was a very dirty habit. Now, this is this. It was when the cross, the, the cross injured it, tore my flesh and removed it. Now I can see the scar. This is a scar of my freedom. It's a scar of my release. It's a scar of what God conquered in my life. The, he, he, came like a, he came like a crushing man in rot and took me to the cross and crushed that area of my life and gave me the deep injury there. And such injuries, God doesn't want it to be. He wants the scar to remain. Because until this day, the scar of the cross is still on Christ. Even when God has healed every other part of his body, he left that one. That one is label. He's a brand. Lift up your hands. I said I wasn't going to lay hands on anyone. The word will impart you. 
then if you release yourself on the word in the word you have received then the word will become flesh that's how we that's how we grow in the word when you hear the word it cannot it cannot impact you on hearing alone it is when you begin to pray in the holy spirit when you pray in the holy ghost what you are doing is that you are releasing yourself to the things you have received nobody can receive god's word and it will it will immediately impact him no you will release yourself to him that is why he said draw nearer to god and he will draw nearer to you so you you do the releasing how do we release ourselves to him we release ourselves praying in the holy ghost how does it become a release when you are praying in the holy ghost your heart is meditating on the lessons on the remas on the understandings if the understanding is not on your heart while you are praying in the spirit you are babbling so I'm, I'm trying to in case you don't know that's how to pray in the holy ghost if you are praying in tongues and your spirit is not meditating meditating accurately and 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 clearly you know you know sequentially on on matters if you are praying in tongues and your heart is not strongly indicting the matters concerning the king and you are brooding on it why praying the spirit your praying in tongues is wrong it's wrong you're not praying in tongues i know people pray in tongues to so while away time because it has a way of releasing disengaging your, your mind so that you are just moving your tongue and then, and then your, your mind is not engaged that's not praying in tongues no 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 that's not praying in tongues if you are praying in tongues your mind is fully engaged with information reception and that information reception as you are analyzing it then praying in tongues is bringing sufficient discharge of divine energy over that information and that is when the incubation the fertilization and the implantation takes place that is when the world is becoming flesh that's how it transforms and so after praying suddenly you discover that you have grace enough to leave it out you have grace enough to resist you have grace enough to now say no you have grace enough to now say yes lord i'm moving that is how it happens and by then you will know that the miracle has taken place lift up your hands As you go tonight, what you will meditate upon your heart is where are the scars that the cross has left on me? There may be an area of your life now that is waiting to be taken to the cross. It's an area. Now, you can, you can be doing well under God, but, but you and God knows that there is still an area that needs to be taken to the cross and God needs to take and wound you there he needs to injure that one and cut it off and when he takes it away he will leave the scar because that is the brand of the crushing that is the evidence of the crushing that is the evidence that you, are, you, were, you were crushed in that aspect of life that is the evidence that you were crushed in that character break me Crush me. Crush me. Where there is new wine, there is new power, there is new freedom. The kingdom is here. I lay down my old flame to carry your new fire today. So make me a vessel. Sing it. Make me an offering. Make me whatever you want me to be. Lord, I came here with nothing. All you have given me. Jesus, bring you out. Father, I pray. I, I, I am giving a word to someone here. You are coming out of a family that seems to be under the pressure of darkness. I am charging you to return from this meeting and confront that darkness. Yes. It, 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 it's been waiting upon you. The whole, the whole people have been waiting upon you. Where you came out from, is really under the pressure of darkness i speak into your spirit tonight as you return under the influence of this new wine confront that pressure of darkness break it in the name of jesus
There is a governmental door opening unto a woman here. I don't know who you are, but I hear it. It's a governmental door opening unto you. Listen carefully. Instrument, calm down. There is a governmental door opening unto you, woman. And the Lord said to me clearly that I should warn you. That he is opening this door to you because he opened it to many and they messed it up. He brought them before kings. He brought them before government authorities. And they went there and forgot their faith and started looking at faces. I'm speaking to a woman. In case he comes upon you, remember this thing I'm saying to you. It's a warning. Yours is a warning. He is going to open a governmental door to you. Now, that governmental is that you will come before authorities and before governing systems to become God's oracle. And the Lord said, now that he's giving you the word, I should follow it up with a strict warning. You don't go there and disappoint the Lord. He said, I had sent many. I've sent many there and they went and forgot the tenets of my covenant and failed to carry out the assignment. Whoever I'm speaking to, in the name of Jesus, you will not forget this assignment on getting there in the name of Jesus. That your heart will not be swayed. Your life, your mind will not be confused. Your spirit will not be thrown in disarray. Father, we thank you. We thank you. Someone here in this conference, you made, you made the decision to return. You made the decision to have, to, to return to study. You made the decision to return to a pursuit, to have an intimate, a decision to rise to higher heights with God. You made that decision in this conference. That you are going back to pursue and labor for, the, for your rising into higher heights with God. Such person, I pray for you this evening. Because I, I hear in my spirit that there are, there are going to be confrontations to discourage you the moment you leave here. Because the enemy knew the decisions you just made. So, once you leave here, discouraging confrontations will come. So, if you are that one and you begin to see them, remember what I just said now. The enemy knew the decisions you just took, you took in this meeting. You made a decision in your heart that you are returning to strive and labor to, uh, to rise to higher heights in the Lord. And, and it's as if forces have heard that and they are waiting to really lad you up with distractions, frustrations and burdens so that you will never remember the decisions you've made. I speak grace for you. By the crushings of this conference, you will receive, you will stand before every, any battle and crush it. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. There are those whom the Lord has raised as intercessors, altruistic intercessors to stand in the gap for others. Receive grace to maintain your post in the name of Jesus. I see someone lifted as if you are raised on a high tower. There is someone as if the Lord is raising you on a high tower and he said that that is an enablement, an empowerment. He is engracing you were weak, but this evening he is making you stronger. And so I pray for that one, whoever you are, lift up your hand, that your hands shall be made strong by the hand of the Almighty. In the name of Jesus. Blessed be thy name. Now give him thanks. Wherever you are, give him thanks. Thank him. Thank him. Thank him. His hand is upon everyone. Thank him. Thank him. Kuratish kafate riantos kibata. Mani prano tepa tariatas kita. Because he is your desire, he will make himself known unto you. Thank him. Piaro tapa tas kibana tariatos. Absolute silence, keyboardies. The Spirit of the Lord has just led me to pray. Lift up your hands. There is someone that I need to change the status. Lift up your hands. Absolute silence. Keep this. Lift up your hands. I hear in my spirit that you are particularly struggling with the ugly foundations of your family. This is something you've been praying for for so many years. Even as you are hearing it now, you know you are the person, but you are discouraged. 
Because you can't even believe that this, this word, this prophetic word coming now is strong or can settle it because you know the amount of intercession and labor you've, you've put in fighting this foundation. And it is troubling you even until now. The Lord said I should release a word over your life. I hear that that foundation has brought your life into all kinds of things you never expected to see yourself live. You've, you, it made you live lives you don't even expect yourself to live. I was not asked by the Holy Spirit to bring anybody out, so I'm not led to call you out. So wherever you are, remain, stand, lift up your hands. If you are such person, then close your eyes. The word I'm about to release upon you, there are encounters that you will start having right from now. Then by midnight today, you will have some confirmations I encounter. And then from tomorrow, practical events will start happening to prove, to, to confirm what was just spoken tonight. From tomorrow morning. Father, because you have opened unto us the door of grace. Let the multidimensional facility of the river of grace flow over this life now. Yes, yes. The multidimensional, the multidimensional resources from the river of grace. You know, you've been praying to break it. You've been fighting. You've been struggling upon it. But it never yielded. Now the Lord is speaking that he has every prayer and intercession you raised. The Lord is aware of it. And it is in this new wine conference because it is your time to arrive the new horizon. That's why he's releasing this word for you now. And so I speak over your spirit, whoever you are, that the multidimensional resources that flows from the river of grace flow in your life in the name of Jesus. The person that I'm talking about, there's a garment that is coming upon you now. It's a garment of grace. Right now, there is a, there is a member of your family that the same foundational evil had already done great damage in his life. The whole family is now almost thrown into mourning. You came to this conference with that burden in your heart and you really don't know what to do. Because each time you are here, hearing the word of the Lord, you are remembering home. You are remembering what's going on back there. But I am telling you that you came to this conference to become a solution when you return. So I speak to that life, whoever you are, as I round up right now. Father, let that, that, that garment, that weight of your glory, kabod, let that kabod, the weight of your glory, come upon that life. Come upon that life. Us as be alert, if anybody's coming on the power of God, stay with the person. That your spirit of God shall fill this life again with fire and flames that come from your altar place. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father. Blessed be thy name. Blessed be thy name. Go ahead and thank him. 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 Yes. We have three minutes to give thanks. We have three minutes to give thanks. Go ahead and thank him. Yes.
and while we are giving thanks if you are here and you are having a decaying spirituality decaying i mean rottenness is hitting your spiritual life that is to say you are losing your life you've lost it not only that you lost it a decay had attacked your soul your spirit and you are you are in, you are not dead yet you are only in the struggle about to die and you are trusting that a covenant be made fast with christ for your for your restoration for your deliverance come out come to the front and kneel down so that i can pray for a minute yes i am led to call these ones out in the whole of this conference as the message is going on deep down in your heart it is hitting you with the reality that you're, you are having a decaying spirituality is decaying and deep down in your spirit rottenness is encroaching you are losing it although you are not dead totally in the spirit but you are still struggling to see if you can survive and it's as a man looking for the breath of life again as if you are saying Jesus come into my life again I just need the breath of life so that I can survive this dirty moment and come out then come I was asked to call you out and pray with you If you are coming you come fast then talk to him talk to him restore 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 Lord restore pray until the day you will come Jesus I am Till the day you will come, Jesus, I am your own. I am your own. I am your own. Till the day you will come, Jesus, I am your own. I am your own. I am your own. Till the day you will come, Jesus, I am your own. Heavenly Father, see your children. Having returned to you, you restore. Set your spirit upon these lives. Kindle your flame afresh. A burning passion, an unquenchable blaze of your, of your presence upon them again, right now. May this conclusion of the conference be their resurrection Lord may this conclusion be their resurrection out of decay out of death out of the grave of darkness for you said in your word that even man should confess with his mouth that you raised Jesus Christ from the dead he shall be saved father save this once again their heart yearns for you Forgive their transgressions. Pardon their iniquities. And cause the flowing power of your blood to come afresh upon them. And Lord, by the blood of the everlasting covenant, redeem these lives in the name of Jesus. And Lord, because I speak, by this utterance I make upon you, hunger for the Lord is deepened. Fresh passion, fresh hunger, fresh desire. I release it upon you as an impartation. You rise from this place to return with a fresh desire and a fresh hunger for the Lord. In the name of Jesus. Run with the grace which you have received. In Jesus' name we pray. Return to your seats. And as we round up, just be on your feet if you can. As we round up. From the rising of the sun to 
Sing it. Your name. We thank you. Now, thank him as we dismiss. visitation. Thank you for these three days, O oh God. For the things that you have done in these three days, my Father, <laughs> will continue to speak from generation to generation. We thank you for every vessel that you have used to pour into our lives. The vessels that you have used to steer the waters. The vessels that you have used to speak into our lives and to push us forward. Thank you for the speed that we have received. Thank you for the strength that we have received. Thank you, O oh God, because this conference has revealed to us the many dimensions of the new wine. Thank you, Father, that each oracle came revealing the dimension that you have revealed. And Father, as we put together the things that we have heard, Lord, a very beautiful whole has been made. And our lives are better. Holy Spirit, thank you for launching us into this new journey. Into this new wine experience. Get us intoxicated daily. May we be so drunk in the spirit that we behave like the drunkard. That our ways will indeed be like the ways of the spirit. That as we stagger, we are just moving like the wind. That no one knows where it comes from and where it is going to. All big it is the spirit of God. Lord, thank you. That like the man that is drunken, oh God, we look at giants and they become bread before us. And fear is taken away, oh God. Thank you, our Father. Thank you for the instruction that the drunkard looks for companions that are like him. And that, Father, as we get drunk in the spirit, may we be surrounded by those who are also drunk in the spirit. Deliver us, O oh God, from unwholesome relationships and associations. Associations that do not profit. Ah, show us who our companions are. 
Yes, Lord. And may they be drawn to us even as we are drawn to them. We thank you. Deep things have been revealed to us. You keep deepening our understanding even as you enlarge our capacity to take in things, oh God, which are so difficult for the simple hearted to understand. But we bless you because there is an unction in us that teaches us all things. And that's the Holy Spirit. So Lord, as we leave this conference, help us to find the time to go through the things that we have heard. And as we sit at the feet of, the, of Jesus, thinking over these things, oh God, may we propose in our hearts that none of the things that we have heard we will fail to do. Because you have not called us here to be just hearers, but doers as well. We ask that you bless your servants and your handmaid. Thank you for prophetess. So you will let that return safely. Thank you, oh God, for your son, Pastor Chintok, his wife, and Shegut. Thank you for your own son that you have used so mightily even tonight. Venerable Dr. Moses Omeke. We thank you for Venerable Dr. Emeka Ezea that has also written to Soka. Lord, we thank you. We thank you for the virtue dancers. We thank you for the chapel band, the redemption band. Lord, we thank you for Minister Susanani. Lord, we thank you for Mr. Iken Naokafo. We thank you for Dorin. Oh, yes, Sonia. We thank you for the ushers, the protocol officers. We thank you for all the officials. We thank you for those who have manned the registration desk. We thank you for the hands that have prepared our meals. We thank you for the sisters that have served and will still serve tonight. Lord, we thank you for those who did great and marvelous works in the secrets. Nobody has seen them in this conference, but you have used them so powerfully behind the scene. We thank you for them. Lord, we bless you. Lord, we bless you for lovers of this vision that have given towards this conference. Lord, we know that as heaven has recorded the fruits of this conference, Lord, much will be recorded against their names because they gave to sponsor this conference. We ask my Father that you will bless them extravagantly. Thank you for the well-wishers. Thank you for those who prayed and are still praying for us. Lord, we thank you for everyone. We thank you for the husbands that released their wives to come and pray. We counted and it's like 13 Saturdays. Not to talk of the vigil and then many online prayers. Lord, bless our husbands. Lord, bless our children who also suffered some inconveniences as we gave ourselves, oh God, to these assignments. Lord, bless all who are in authority over us that released us and gave us permission to participate in this conference. Lord, bless the Chapel of Redemption. Lord, may the ministry of Chapel of Redemption go from strength to strength. In the name of Jesus. And Enugu, you are blessed. Uh, the influence of God these three days is upon you, this land. In the name of Jesus. Father, we are asking that even as you brought everyone safely to this conference, as they begin to return tomorrow morning, May it please you, O oh God, to cause the earth, the land, and the waters to be obedient to your will concerning all. In the name of Jesus. And for all who, O oh God.
Lord, virtue had gone out of their lives. We ask for a replacement, a replenishing, a renewal in the mighty name of Jesus. We give you praise, our God. By your mercy, you will keep us alive till we come for the retreat in November. And then, Lord, next year, <laughs> we will continue with the new wine experience. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Almighty God. Thank you. Thank you. We give you glory. We celebrate your love and your faithfulness. You are worthy, O oh God. Hallelujah. 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 Bless the name of the Lord. 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 Amen. If you have the jota, just turn to the back cover. And you will see that the retreat will hold November. November, can somebody mention the date? To 16th. November 14th to 16th, we'll be returning to this place. If, if you love what God is doing here, you shouldn't wait until you receive SMS or you get a flyer. You mark this date in your calendar and you pray towards it and plan towards it. You know, I, I, it surprises me that people who keep coming, they keep saying, we didn't get a book. I said, we did it. And it's like, were you not there at the last conference? Did you not hear the announcement? Encourage us by not waiting to be reminded rather be the ones reminding us that you have planned and you have, you have prayed and that you will be there hallelujah so we hope to see everyone that the lord permits to be with us in november in the name of jesus can we please rise share the grace in fellowship and then you can sit back for your lunch, for your dinner, which is takeaway. Amen. The grace. The love of God. The fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Because now forevermore. Amen. Surely. Mercy shall follow us. Days of our lives. Dwell in the house of the Lord. Forever and ever. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run into it and they are safe. Therefore, we are safe in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. God bless you. Have a restful night. And see you in November. Amen.